Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. Today I am joined by award-winning director Kyle Roberts. His new project, What Rhymes With Reason, is coming to theaters on October 10th. And I'm so excited because just from watching the preview, reading about the film, I just know that this film has such important content that the people for today are going to need. So Kyle, thank you for joining me. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just a couple Emmys there on the on the <laughs> awards, yeah, which doesn't doesn't matter, but yeah. <laughs> no, it does matter. Emmy <laughs> award winning director. <laughs> yes, yes. That's incredible. Um, yeah. So Obviously. what rhymes with reason? People watch it like, what is that? What what rhymes with reason? Is it is it a question? Is it season? Is it treason? Is it <laughs> it's sneezing? Of course, right? I mean, that's what it is. No. So what rhymes with reason? What it is is a coming of age adventure drama. So we took a lot of inspiration from John Hughes films from the 80s, also Goonies, uh, but all, you know, what I love about John Hughes is his films were, I felt, were real and honest. Uh, and that was kind of a need and calling for us to address these topics of mental health today. Um, uh, at when 13 Reasons Why came out and shows like that, that kind of glorify suicide, we knew as a team there had to be a better way to talk about this that is real and honest like those John Hughes films, but is also family friendly and not cheesy. So easy, right? Just make that movie. <laughs> so that's <laughs> kind of been the challenge for uh, eight years is what has taken us to produce this film of really craft it. We did five years of research of talking to counselors and uh, principals and youth workers, youth leaders, youth pastors, uh, and, and high school kids, of course, uh, and just getting really good feedback. And actually the number one feedback of all of those five years was please, please, please do not show an attempt at suicide because, mm -hmm. because that can create an, an ideation um, and potentially glorify. Yeah, so and, yeah. we took that to heart, yeah. What you were saying about 13 Reasons Why, it was one of those TV shows, honestly, that I think everyone gravitated to because it's so raw and you're right. like addicted kind of to that. But like you said, right. it it did that. It did the opposite. It What it did was almost kind of made it feel like it could be OK, to, yeah. you know, to do to, to take that approach. And um, how I mean, I, honestly, just period in Hollywood. I grew up in the industry, so I understand yeah. what you're up against yeah. to bring family friendly content that's yeah. still real and raw. What what goes into that? I mean, your family friendly approach has attracted DreamWorks, Disney, Nickelodeon, you know, all these big companies yes. where, um, you know, I was told once I couldn't say God in a song, you know, I'm a singer um, right. for one of these huge companies. Um, and, you know, because they just don't want like that kind of stuff. It's like the, the sure. cooler stuff or the edgy stuff is what's cool. Sure. Talk about being gutsy enough to do yeah. that, to take that on. And, and why did you feel called? To yeah. That? And that's that was the challenge. I mean, that's what took us so long to craft this story and continue to rework it and rewrite it, re rewrite it. And we always put challenges on ourselves. a lot of our projects so there's six lead teenagers so it's an ensemble piece and that makes it that much more complicated too because you really have to flesh out these characters you know throughout the story and you only have you know hour and a half hour 45 minutes or so uh to do that uh but that, i mean that that was the challenge you know this whole time is like w w and all of our again research through this there really wasn't another film out there that was was this film uh, and that's actually kind of a challenge for us at the moment because say Lionsgate or Sonya Firm or whatever they don't know where to put us they both have seen the movie and love it but they're like you're not this cheesy you're not cheesy you're not this this let's say very uh straightforward uh overtly Christian movie yeah. um and you're not uh Outer Banks <laughs> or something and we're kind of this movie in the middle that meets kids where they are and our goal from day one was to earn the right to be heard from high school students today and their parents and that's what we that's what we did with this movie wow and you know that challenge is like youth leaders everywhere right <laughs> like yeah. christian youth leaders everywhere are like how can we reach the teens and not come off as over yes. you know like we're overbearing or we're too super cheesy and corny you know what i mean um well, and i know you that, were a youth leader group, right youth, sorry go ahead sorry you i'm sorry no you were a youth leader at some point yeah, yeah. So I did Young Life for eight years. And uh, are yeah. you familiar with Young Life? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that ministry that the goal of Young Life is to earn the right to be heard from, you know, generation. Uh, and so I did that. I was a volunteer leader for eight years. I met my wife there. So there's so many reasons. Uh, I love Young Life. 
But during that time, and this was the started in 08, uh, it's kind of still towards the beginning of just the social media explosion, right? Um, and, and during those eight years, I mean, we just saw a super massive rise in anxiety and depression, thoughts of suicide, some of their friends taking their life. Uh, and me experiencing that with them and seeing that with them. And during the same time, 13 Reasons Why came out. And it's not just that show. There's a lot of shows and films that cover this, but it is, it's like too dark and too uh, gritty, you know, uh, that that can, not all of them, but can tend to glorify. And most counselors would not recommend those shows. Um, they would, they would, they would tell you to stay away from those shows. Christian or not counselors, they would tell you that this, if you're going through this right now, you should not watch this show, which that's interesting, obviously too. Um, yeah. So we took, we very, it's, it's a long, it took us a long time, but very carefully crafted this story to entertain and engage, but also provide hope. And that's one of the biggest things that these other shows don't have. Thirteen, Re there's no hope, there's no redemption in Thirteen yeah. Reasons Why. Yeah. Um, it is entertaining, but but there is no hope. Um, right. So so I would say why why you know what's right. the thirteen reason why why is the, why are you making this movie or this show? But um, so anyway that but that's just our that's our mission and that was our our passion is that there has to be a better way to do this. It's needed more than ever. The number two cause of death, uh, CDC says, number two cause of death um, in our youth starting at ten is suicide. And just five years ago is the number 10 cause of death. So with COVID wow. and everything else, just continue on we're in this massive social media age and social bullying and acceptance, yeah, all these things. But then you add on loneliness and isolation and all this other stuff. And I would, I would say most adults wouldn't envy being a teenager today because they, mm -hmm. do, they do see it. And they do understand they, they don't live it, but they with, with them, but they see it and they understand I think, I don't know if we can uh, factor a, a, a number, but it's just magnified today more than than, than I think most experts realize. Yeah. You know, they, they know yeah. it's so magnified, but it's just wild. Right. And I know the statistics, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't know if it's just in teens, but I know it's about 700,000 suicides per year. Yes. Um, and that is just staggering, you know, mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, this kind of, this really does hit home with me. I was suicidal from age seven yeah. to like 16, uh, oh, wow. where I battled the thoughts of suicide. I just thought that was the better alternative. It's obviously an, an assault from the, the, the enemy of my soul, right. To, yes. to even insert that into such a, a tender mind. Um, talk about that. Is there, is there kind of a spiritual component component to yeah. this that you've seen? Yeah, I would say so in this film, I would call it uh, faith adjacent, I guess, or faith aligned uh, where there's yeah. faith. Uh, so instead of a covertly, we're a, uh, or overtly, we're a covertly right. <laughs> Christian, yeah. movie, so, yeah. so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, I mean, there's a beautiful rendition of it as well with my soul that they have to play on this piano in this like uh, abandoned church in the middle of nowhere to, to find another clue. Uh, we didn't really talk about this the what the heck this movie is right yeah <laughs> yeah, give, yeah, for those, yeah yeah for those that are watching this, this okay yeah, so for what those is that what are watching because those reason? those that are reading it they'll they'll already know kind of because i'll have that okay. information but for those that are watching please tell us okay so just watching so there's six teenagers <clears throat> and the absolute tragedy happens in their life through that tragedy tragedy that ignites them to embark on this trip into the wilderness to find this legendary landmark that no one's ever found before. So that's kind of our story. It's very Goonies-esque, you know, it's kind of Stand By Me, you know, that's vibes, uh, kind of Outer Banks vibes. But uh, through through this adventure into the wilderness, they start opening up and they start, you know, really talking about these, the, all six of them are going through totally different things, but uh, anxiety and depression, uh, anger, thoughts of suicide. Um, and even in the first act, we set up that there's a, a memorial on a locker of a kid that committed suicide the year before. And so just setting up, that's that's the reality. That's the world that they live in. An average kind of bigger school and maybe smaller school too, but I know like a maybe 6A, I don't know, states, you know, different, but bigger school, they'll go through four or so during their high school experience. And that's just, it was not the case, you know, when we were growing up um, yeah. by any means. So it's just so wild and so, um, just heartbreaking um, to, to, to see that and experience that with them. 
Um, and we just knew, yeah, there had to be a better way. So that's what we, that's what we set up this adventure lens of kind of to tell it of like, tell all these and use the adventure lens as a metaphor for adolescence. Mm -hmm. And the spiritual component. Oh, yes. Yes. So it's to really how we approach that. Uh, and why I say like faith adjacent is faith throughout the whole movie, but it's just told through our characters. And I feel like not all uh, faith films, but a lot of them can tend to um, have a message and that they just they just reiterate that, you know, eight or nine times throughout the film. And some of that bugs me because I, I no matter what it is, whether it's that or, or any genre, when you treat the audience like they're an idiot uh, and spoofing yeah. them or something, it, it really, really bugs me. And so especially for um, a youth or, or teen audience. So that, like you said, it's been a privilege for us to work with uh nickelodeon and dreamworks and lego and hasbro and all these companies and we did that for about 10 years and now we're finally getting back this is a very independent film about a 1.5 million dollar budget which isn't huge but we know um like our team will obviously what we could do with that and we're passionate about it and if you've seen the trailer like it looks like it looks amazing it, it, right it, yeah you would that. never think that at all right thank you uh but that's so for us it's kind of this unique um independent voice, which is important. And I think it's important for everyone to get behind uh, when you see it and you believe in what they're what they're doing. Because for, for us and our team, it's this youth ministry background. It's uh, all this commercial work we do with family friendly brands. And then our, you combine that with our filmmaking chops and you have this unique voice for our team that, you know, obviously we believe this, but it needs to be out there. It needs to be, because uh, other, most studio films, especially that geared towards a teen audience, they don't want to make it family friendly. You know, they they want to make it raunchy. They want to go so hard with the comedy or whatever else. And obviously that's funny, but also where's the hope kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this. So for adults or, you know, people that want to come alongside teens who are struggling with this, don't know, they don't know how to approach it. You know, they don't want to over preach at them or, right. um, or whatever, you know, or, or, you know, how teenagers are, they're just like, ah, get away from me with that. Or just leave me alone. Or I don't want to yes. talk. You know, there's all those kind of things. What are you, what advice do you give to, you know, adults wanting to help? Yes. I know this person. I'm looking you right in the eye. No, I, so I, I'm from Oklahoma and um, doing Young Life for eight years. The majority of what we saw were teens that are over churched. You know, they do go to church, but they're kind of just, you know, fed to them all the time and they need to find their uh, own path in relationship with God. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that that's what a lot of either small groups or why small groups are so important or groups like Young Life or Kayla, you know, just other things uh, to help to help them, you know, find their way to then then just I want to say just their parents. But it's it's kind of different when you can find someone a little maybe a little closer to their age or can, you know, you know, connect with them and stuff. But this this film was totally geared towards youth workers and parents to take uh, youth that they either serve or love, you know, care about and um experience it together so just like we talked about they go on this journey and they begin to open up we've carefully crafted this movie to do that so it's like you said it's hard you know you put you, teenagers put up a wall and sometimes they don't want to talk about anything but you can watch this film and when we've seen it time and time again on some of our test screenings and 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 stuff that when youth see other youth on screen suffering and hurting but again has a story of hope at the end of it they feel heard uh and seen and not you know know that they're not alone um and that's so important that's that is what some of the, the other shows that we're talking about also do but coming back to it of like also there has to be some kind of redemption in my so i feel like i have an obligation you know our team has an obligation yeah. here to tell tell a story of hope that's beautiful well and that's that was my story right i didn't yeah. have i didn't grow up christian so i didn't have yeah. even a christian outlet i Mariah Carey, that was who did it for me. She yes. wrote a song about being a sad little girl. And I was a very sad little girl, suicidal. And mm -hmm. the enemy was just like, you know, whispering that. And I, I by God's grace, stumbled mm -hmm. upon Mariah Carey. I didn't know who she was. I just loved her, one of her little, you know, her pop songs. I stumbled uh, upon that song, cried my eyes out, felt better. And I said, if she can get out of that, then I can get out of it. And that's what changed the whole course of my life. So you're 100% right. The kids are just looking for somebody to look up to or, or like, oh, that's, I can relate. 
then I can also get through it too. That's so great. Thank you for what you're doing. Absolutely. So I muted this for a second. There was an airplane going over. I don't know if how loud <laughs> that was. No, yeah, yeah it's for, fine. For sharing that. Um, and yeah, I think m maybe some adults would say this is like the most out there and perverse generation. And that's just not true. You know, they're, they're searching and filling them with whatever is around them. And we need more content like this and solid, um, uh, mentors, you know, in their life too, that can pour into them because they're, they're filling it with whatever they can, they can. Um, and, and that's, that's just the reality of that. And I think, I feel like they're in search for real more than ever you know there's they're seeing all these platforms and all these either uh, hip, hypocrisy or just fake you know just 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 silly you know stuff and just all these things it's not really real it's an act and it's whatever and it's like i think i think when they find something um actually the breakfast club resonates with a lot of teenagers today when they watch it because it's just so authentic um and i think yeah. i think i think they're searching for something real and something honest that's awesome Thank you so much, Kyle. Is there anything yes. else that you'd like to share with us? Well, we just want to encourage people to go out on 1010, which is World Mental Health Day, by the way. Uh, and we didn't even know that going into this. We had the film on the market for a week and Fathom Events reached out to us that we want to release it nationwide. We're like, that sounds cool. How does 1010 sound? It has a good ring to it. I don't know. That sounds great. The very next day, we had a call with 988, who's one of our partners. Uh, 988 is the, is the nation's mental health lifeline. And they were like, uh, oh yeah, that's, that's the perfect day. And I was like, I, I know it's the perfect day, but why don't you tell me why you think, you know, it's the perfect day. <laughs> it's kind of trying to play it off. And they're like, yeah, it's world mental health day. And I was like, oh my gosh, wow. that's our, just God pulling strings. He knew this plan the whole time. And yeah. that's something I'm constantly reminded, uh, myself is that this isn't Kyle Roberts plan for this movie. We have a calling and a mission for eight years, but it's also been a lot of um waiting and deciphering and um kind of that beauty in in, in the waiting right that's this very mm -hmm. can be very frustrating at times and and sometimes i mean i'm straight up like god if this is your plan why why isn't this happening and mm -hmm. and it's hard in those moments and at those times but it constantly reminded when you see these glimpses of things it's like oh yes this was his plan the whole time to release it on world mental health day at a time eight years ago that that stat we talked about it was number 10 and now it's right. number two and i also have a 10 year old daughter this year wow. and so there's there's just so many things that she's telling all her friends at school like wow. there's so many things of why this needs to happen right now more than ever when we first started this thing i know we were talking to potential investors and they didn't really think we were lying but i think they just didn't know how uh you know sharing some stats even at that time i think they just didn't get it you know they weren't really connected with their kids maybe or you know i think COVID also helped uh bring a lot of those things to light too but anyway i'm super thankful for your time too just chatting with me about this yeah. uh and just encourage people to go out on 1010 um another big stat we share is that one in 10 teenagers suffer from depression and even sometimes suicidal thoughts one in 10 at any given time in the u.s and so we're encouraging youth workers parents if you can if you can get a small group of of 10 together and watch this film together because statistically one of them is probably really really needs to see this film and so you can mm -hmm. talk about these things together much like sound of freedom we're going to have a qr code up on the screen after it and that's going to take people to uh places they can seek help right then and right there so it's a right. different part 988 the hope line is kind of like a christian version of 988 and we love them uh a young life and then also put in their zip code and find a counselor near them uh right, right there too so a bunch of free and paid resources and options to seek right. help right then uh, and i know 988 is staffing up about three times more than the their callers uh for that night and so i'm just so thankful um that we have we have a very real opportunity of helping a lot a lot of people yeah 